brothers and sisters, children of the flock, ladies and gentlemen, friends beyond the binary, as some folks have said, she's and him's and they's and them's all are welcome here to Pastor Petey's place for parishioners, both pompous and proletariat alike. We'd like to thank you for coming once again and being a part of our congregation. Brother Corey Ryan Forster, of course, would like me to tell you once again, thank you so much to all of you who have upgraded to a paid membership, Father God, and helping keep the lights on here at Pastor Petey's by contributing to the building fund, Father God. But for those of you who are hanging out for free, we love you all the same, Father God. But if you could afford a cup of coffee a month, Father God, it would go a long way. If what we do not only here at Pastor Petey's place for parishioners brings value to your life, Father God, if you look forward to it every week, if it's a blessing to you, then be a blessing to us. But only if you can afford it, Father God. We know these are dire times that we are in. And speaking of dire times, Father God, uh, well, we are happy to report that Deacon Ricky is out of the hospital, Father God, Uh, or as we like to call it, a brief sabbatical from the hospital because we know, uh, Lord bless him, he will be back. Father God, he's a clumsy man that don't take care of himself. We always tell him, we say, Deacon Ricky, it ain't nothing wrong with having a biscuit every now and then, but three steak biscuits from Hardy's every morning ain't going to do your arteries no good, Father God. Deacon Ricky's arteries are more congested than traffic in Atlanta at Nine o'clock on a Friday morning, Father God, Deacon Ricky, take that crest door and pray. Woo! Deacon Ricky is back at the church. He is not with us in the congregation right now because we have put him on parking lot duty, Father God. But lest ye think that that makes you feel safer about your valuables and your cars, you know good and well Deacon Ricky has popped the hatch on somebody's truck and is sitting there smoking half a pack of cigarettes while I'm in here doing the hard work, Father God. But he is out there in case some scoundrel runs amok, Father God. Pastor Petey remembers when I was a child going to church, me and my friends used to climb under the pews during the prayer Father God when people weren't looking thought we was being sneaky we told them we said look we just gonna get down here and kneel to pray Father God kneeling to pray they always say the higher the hair the closer to God but for some reason you need to get down on your hands and knees when you're talking to him sounds more like having a conversation with the devil Father God but I don't know exactly how it all works we used to climb down there Father God and as soon as the pastor would start to Father God and we'd scoot down underneath the pews. We'd crawl down through there, Mission Impossible style Father God, like Tom Cruise trying to get through a laser, dipping between all the the legs, the varicose veins, Father God, the pleated slacks, the Werther's originals falling out of the pockets. That almost held us up, Father God. Them hard candies would fall. We'd stop for a second. I'd look at my friend. I'd say, Curtis, no. It's a trap. Don't open that Werther's original. That sound is going to get us caught, Father God, because even though everybody's being held down by the Spirit, everybody knows the opening of a hard candy can pierce through any sound, Father God. We'd crawl all the way to the back. We'd slip through the door into the vestibule, Father God, and we'd make our way out. We were free. Father God, we never once thought, what are our parents going to think? Whenever the prayers ended and we aren't there, we thought perhaps, Father God, they think the rapture happened and only the children made it, Father God. Only those truly pure of heart. We'd sneak out. We'd be in the parking lot, Father God, and we'd see our our very own Deacon Ricky. It wasn't the Deacon Ricky we know, but there have been many Deacon Rickys in the past and they'd always be standing out in that parking lot, Father God, talking to each other in a circle supposed to be on parking lot duty ain't watching a damn thing except the ash on their cigarette get longer father god and that's when we found out that some sins is okay so long as you're on duty father god you will also notice father god that sister jody is not with us in attendance today 
And I would say that we need to pray for Sister Jody, but instead, actually, we need to pray for the person who was unfortunate enough to come across Sister Jody when she was playing Keno Father God down at the local gas station. You know the one, the one ran by our Indian brothers and sisters. Let me tell you something right now, ladies and gentlemen, friends beyond the binary folks, everyone here in the congregation. Now, as we know, we do not do typical church doing stuff here. We are a non-denominational church. We believe in science, Father God. We believe in compassion, Father God. We believe in equality. However, I know there's a lot of folks out there, unfortunately, what have the same accents that we do, that dabble in a little thing, a putrid, horrible thing called racism and stereotyping Father God and being prejudiced. And I abhor that, abhor that, however you want to pronounce it. Pastor Petey does them both, Father God. That being said, I personally believe that if a stereotype is positive, there ain't nothing wrong with saying it, Father God. And I'm going to ask for an amen after this because I believe it deserves an amen. But for the love of God, for the love of all things holy, whoo, them Indians sure can't run a gas station, Father God. Amen. I'm not sitting here trying to do the stereotypical every single Indian runs a gas station. Father God, the Simpsons done did that on a poo and they got in trouble for it. Father God, that ain't what I'm saying. I'm not saying that every Indian runs a gas station, Father God. But what I am saying is that every gas station ran by an Indian is a top-tier gas station, Father God. Amen. Here in Chickalookie, we got two main gas stations, Father God, one of which is the corporate gas station. Ran by one of them Exxons or Chevrons or Sitgos or whatever it is, Pastor Petey, don't pay attention because I skedaddle right on past it to go down to the mom and the pop gas station because Pastor Petey is local, supports local, and by God will die local, Father God. There's a couple things you will see at both gas stations, Father God, whether it be the corporate one or whether it be the mom and pop one ran by the Indians, Father God, a couple things you will see. You will see, of course, in both, some ne'er-do-wells, Father God. Some folks that, as Brother Gary Goldman says, when do they do well? Ne'er, Father God, they ne'er do well. You'll see them sitting out there in the parking lot, loitering, Father God, with the hood up on their car, making a call on a cell phone. It looks like a burner, Father God. They've been there for an hour, and we all know that they're just waiting on their plug to show up, Father God, but they had to meet in a public spot, but had to make it look unconspicuous or conspicuous. I don't really know how that word is uh, meant to be said, Father God. Pastor Petey is a man of the word, not a man of words, you feel me? You will see people walking into both of these gas stations ready to do several things, Father God. They're there to pay for their gas, get an energy drink, and talk shit about every single person in the community, Father God. However, at these corporate gas stations, they don't know how to handle such trifolications, Father God, because they go by the book. Corporate says you can't cuss out a customer, Father God, because the customer's always right. But at the Indian gas station, if there's some tomfoolery going on, by God, Mr. Indian don't have nobody to answer to but himself, and he will let you know that that type of trifling don't take place at the mom and pop gas station, and you need to go on down the road, and no, sir, we don't sell crickets here, Father God subject, Father God, I was talking about Sister Jody. The reason I brought up gas stations is because that's where the incident took place. You see, down at the local mom and pop gas station, it doubles, of course, as a chicken restaurant and a halfway legal gambling ring, Father God. They play in Keno out the back, Father God. The law done took them penny slots years ago, but they can't do nothing about Keno because of some loophole, Father God. One of the only loopholes that we're fine with ranched here in Chickalooky, Father God. <clears throat> well, Sister Jody was down there playing Keno, and by God, she got her a winning ticket, Father God. And Lord knows she needs it. Her husband got drunk last week and tried to dry start his boat on land, Father God, and them repairs is more than they have. But that boat is also all that's near and dear. 
to Miss Jody. Father God, she gets out on that lake. All the cares go away, Father God. She ain't thinking about how her grandson blew up her kitchen trying to make meth in a bean pot, Father God. She ain't thinking about the canker sores she got all over her feet, Father God, walking back and forth in that factory for years just to be able to pay for an education for that boy who squandered it just so he could make meth in a bean pot, Father God. She can just sit there and read her soap opera digest, Father God, and try to make sense of how the doctor's evil twin on General Hospital, Father God, was able to slip past security even though he's clearly got a mole on the wrong side of his face, Father God. It's the little things in life. Well, Sister Jody also had a little bit to drink, and we do not encourage imbibing too much to the point of violence. However, sometimes it is justified. She dropped a ticket, Father God. When she dropped a ticket, some unfortunate soul behind her, thinking they was going to pull a fast one on an old woman who may not have complete control of all her faculties, Father God wouldn't notice picked up their ticket, tried to claim it as their own Father God, but they messed with the wrong old lady Father God. They didn't know that Sister Jody placed second place in the Iron Man contest a few years back. She did it with a herniated disc wearing pantyhose, Father God. She ain't one to be trifled with. There'd been such a thing as woke back in the 70s, she would have played middle linebacker for Florida State, Father God. Sister Jody realized what's happened and She picked up a 12-pack of, I don't know if it was Pepsi or Coca-Cola, Father God, neither one of them was sponsoring this here sermon, so we'll just say it was Dr. Thunder, Father God. Picked up a 12-pack of Dr. Thunder, took a couple swings around like she was shot-putting, Father God, and knocked this sumbitch directly in the dirt. The law, of course, was called, but when Sheriff Augie got down there and was explained the situation, he said that it was justifiable, but he wasn't going to take the thief in because the knot on their head counted as time served, Father God. Moral of the story, don't mess with Sister Jody or any of the fine women here at Pastor Petey's place for parishioners, both pompous and proletariat alike. Because I'll tell you one thing right now, even though she looks skin and bones, Sister Sheila has got a hard left as well, Father God. She'll hit you with that one too if you come for them baked beans, Father God. I've seen it once or twice. Can I get a amen? Amen, Pastor. Father God. Lord, Father God, I done got too hopped up and I forgot to mention the actual sponsors of of today's sermon, Father God, please. And we thank them for sponsoring this sermon down there at Diamond Daryl's Discount Dungarees, Father God. You keep putting stitches on your old tattered britches? Well, come down to Diamond Daryl's and get some of these bitches. That's what I'm talking about, Father God. Good pants at a good price. If you're thick in the middle because you spend too much time at the griddle, we sell pants better than Charlotte Daniels plays a fiddle, Father God. Down on Daffodil Drive, just past Barney Berry's Bait Shop, Father God. If they don't fit or they got a split, well, we got pants that are gooder than shit. I normally don't curse so much, but by by, by God, that was the copy they had written. And Pastor Petey is uh, not going to bite the hand that feeds, Father God. We actually don't have that much in way of a message today, Father God. We have taken up a lot of our time talking about Sister Jody, Father God, Deacon Ricky, Father God. But we do, of course, have to pray, and I feel that we should end on the prayer, Father God. Everyone bow their heads right now, if you don't mind. Father God, we come to you today as humble parishioners, Father God, knowing that what we don't know is so much more vast than what we do know, Father God. Though our knowledge may not be infinite, our faith is, Father God. We'd like to pray for all the people, Father God, who have lost a thumb trying to close the trunk of their cyber truck, Father God. It's an epidemic that's going around. 
Father God, I don't know what's happening to this country. Back in my day, we used to we used to worship people like Levon Helm, Father God, George Jones, Father God, Abraham Lincoln, Father God, and yes, I put them in the same sentence. All great Americans. Although Levon Helm, I believe, was an honorary Canadian for a while due to his involvement with the band, Father God, but that's not the point. We used to look up to great men, true innovators, Father God. Some of these people may have had a questionable past and did some bad things, but at least Henry Ford was somebody that you could get behind actually doing something, Father God. John Wayne himself was a piece of shit, but the Duke that he portrayed perhaps was not. Of course, he did a lot of stuff to Native Americans that wasn't good. You understand what I'm saying? We used to look up to real men, Father God, people who gritted it out. People who exemplified America and American standards, Father God. And now we're bending over backwards for an apartheid-loving South African emerald mine descendant, Father God, who don't give a damn about none of you, nor me, Father God. Carrying water for a man who spent his fuck you money on a social media site just so people could say the n-word with impunity where have we gone wrong in this country father god is this your hero elon musk and andrew tate father god are these your heroes men who would have died as pilgrims father god are these your men these titans of industry these liars to close the hatch of their door father god so we pray for them and as always, Father God, we pray for this nation and ourselves as we head head first into an election year, Father God, where we may not like either one of the choices, Father God, but we do have two choices. I myself personally think that the choice is clear. When it comes to someone that's going to be hopped up on Adderall and possibly bomb us back to the Stone Age, Father God, or someone who, God forbid, stutters when playing Pictionary, I think I know who I'll take, but it ain't up to me, Father God. Ain't up to me to get political here at Pastor Petey's, only to say what's on my mind. What's best for the country, I do not know, but I know what's worse for the country, and that's all the hate and the vitriol that I see every day, Father God. And let's not act like it ain't coming, specifically, more often than not, from one side, Father God. It seems like a lot of these people don't actually have morals, Father God. They don't stand on anything, Father God. They want to win at all costs, no matter what that winning means, Father God. Father God, I saw somebody the other day wearing a shirt that said real men wear diapers and it had a picture of Donald Trump on it, Father God, and I was conflicted. Woo, I was conflicted, Father God. Because on one hand, there ain't nothing wrong with a man wearing a diaper. Father God, I've been known to do it from time to time and incontinence as you get older is an issue that should be treated with grace and dignity and is not your fault. Oftentimes, Father God, that is unless you're snorting amphetamines all the time, loosening up that butthole when it didn't have to be loosened up, Father God. No, a lot of y'all didn't know that amphetamines loosen up the butthole, but Father God, they do. Every now and then, Pastor Petey will have to take one of his cousin's Adderalls to get a sermon done, and woo-wee, that butthole opens up like a drunken therapy, Father God, I'll tell you what. But the fact that so many people are worshiping this man, Father God, so much so that they will buy a t-shirt with him and a diaper on it, supposedly all proceeds go into his legal fund where he's accused father god of committing some heinous crimes some of these crimes father god these people say they don't care if he committed them or not they will still vote for him with impunity father god where have we gone as a nation i say we bring back will rogers father god of course i don't know enough about that man he possibly said some horrible things about indigenous folks that's the thing father god we're not all perfect none of us can be we can strive for perfection father god knowing that we will fail but in trying to do so at least we achieve greatness father god and we don't do that anymore we strive to trigger 
Father God, that's all anyone cares about anymore. It's not about being right, Father God. It's not about being righteous, Father God. It's not about being moral, Father God. It's about getting the other side to get all in their feelings, Father God. And now you feel like you've won. Well, you may have won, but we have not. As a country, we have failed, Father God. And all God's people said, Amen. I apologize there for getting on my soapbox, Father God, but sometimes it happens. That has been Pastor Petey's sermon this week, concluding with a prayer. We appreciate all of you who pay your $5 a month, put it in the offering plate. Of course, some of you say, hey, $5 isn't enough. I wish you had a bigger tier, Pastor Petey, but I don't. It's $5 a month. That's all it is. But for those of you that want to pay more, you can go on PayPal. Use buttercreamcory at gmail.com. Donate whatever you want. It goes straight to the building fund. But as per usual, hanging out for free is fine. Your presence here is all we ask for. We love you so much. We hope you have a wonderful week at work, Father God, if there is such a thing. And remember, don't do nothing I wouldn't do. But if you're going to, Father God, do it twice.